Welcome to our first of three firewall rule videos. This first firewall rule video is going to deal with inbound traffic and we're going to look at how to block traffic but then if you're running a web server how to allow traffic at the same time. So we're going to look at that and then we'll touch on the time-based options. So let's hop right into it. We're going to log in into our, uh, our router. Do not use UBNT UB, UBNT I use that for demonstration purposes only. Make sure you change the username and password on your firewall. We're going to log in. We're going to go to firewall NAT, firewall policies. We're going to modify WAN in because it has ETH0 direction in, which is our WAN interface, and the direction in. And you can see the default action is drop, but if we edit the rule set, rule number one says allow established and related established and related connections. So basically we are accepting everything that has been initiated from the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a rule and we're going to call this block web and we're going to drop the traffic and it'll be TCP and we will do new established and related source since it's just the web will be port 80 and destination we're gonna leave blank we'll go ahead and save that and now what you'll see here is since we didn't move that rule when I go to a website it loads fine because it processes these rules in order and our first rule is accepting everything. So we're going to move this up and make it rule number one and we're going to save that rule order. And then when we try to refresh this you're going to see it just says connecting, 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 connecting and it never does anything. But if we come over here to the stats we'll see that this block web is incrementing. If we go over here and we go to Facebook, Facebook redirects to HTTPS, which is a different port. So it loads. So the allow established related, you're going to see it incrementing. But then the block, block web is also incrementing because it's dropping. The other one is incrementing because it is accepting. So how do we change that? Well, what we'll do is we could we could try to stack more ports in here. I don't recommend it. I like everything to be clear and concise. So when I open this up, I see boom, block web, port 80, destination protocol were dropping. Very clear to me. We'll add another rule. We'll call this block uh, secure web. We'll drop. It'll be TCP, establish new related, source port 443. Destination, we're going to leave that alone for now. We're not going to touch the time yet. We'll drag this guy up and put him right underneath rule number one. So now, if I refresh this, you see it just says waiting, 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 waiting waiting and it is eventually going to come back and it's going to look like this. And we can tell these are working because our action is drop and our packets and our bytes are incrementing. So we are we're matching those rules and the router is doing what it's supposed to do, the firewall is doing what it's supposed to do, it's blocking those packets. So boom. Alright, so how do we know 100% sure that that's working. Okay. I don't know if that's really the question you're asking, but I'm going to show you. So you know how we left the destination blank? Let's say that you've got an IP address on a, a tablet internally or a laptop or a computer, and you've bound that in your DHCP server. And so the IP address, so that never changed. Or let's, let's say that um, when you use your configuration wizard, that you use some of the ports as a different subnet so you could change the destination and have this affect some 
addresses or some networks but not others. So on this computer we are 192.168.1.2 so if we take this destination for block web and we go in here and we change the destination because this is the destination is on the inside of the firewall source is on the outside uh, when you're talking about block and traffic from the the WAN ETH0 in. That's how we got to think about this. But let's say that I want to block it. Let's say that my kid's computer is 1.3. So we change this rule 10 to block port 80 destined for 192.168.1.3. So I'm 1.2. So if I hit refresh, look, waiting, and boom, the site loads. However, Facebook, still, because we didn't modify that HTTPS rule, or the secure web rule, it is still incrementing and is still blocked. So we can come back over here to our rules, and we come in here and we take out that destination. So if you're doing DNAT and you've got, you know, what you've got to do is you'll have to add a rule called allow web server. You're going to allow TCP, but this time you would have a destination of port 80. So you'll see there's a differentiation in the rules. One, we are blocking a source. The other one we are allowing a destination. So this configuration would block your your people behind the router from surfing port 80 and 443 but would still allow port 80 to be forwarded from the outside. So real quick before we wrap this up let's take a look at these rules And we'll just touch on the time configuration. And this is something that you're really going to have to, to experiment with and, and kind of mold it to your liking. But if we come in here and we go to time, I think what I want to do is I want to block the web on Sundays. And we're going to start that 2016 07 13. So starting tomorrow at 1 a.m., we're going to block the web on Sundays. I encourage you to get in there. You're not really going to mess this thing up. You can always delete the rules, but part of learning is touching it and and seeing how it reacts and getting it in your hands is very important. So now what we've got is for rule number 10, or, uh, our, our block web rule, which shows up over here in order number one, is we're going to block that starting on Sundays. So if we refresh my site, you can see it came up. So let's go to blog. Let's make sure it's not a fluke. So it comes up and it's working so let's see if we can get to Facebook and there's the rub see we are just still blocking that full time so you see that secure is still incre incrementing so if we came into this rule we did a time based rule on this where we we're gonna block on Sunday then you could invert it and only if you click match all weekdays except for these no, it would allow, I'm sorry, it would allow it on Sunday and block the rest of the, it's kind of hard to think about inversion there. Um, but we will um, do the same thing. And there's Facebook. So another thing, now that we're talking about, we talked about our destination rules. So let's say that 
that you've got a web server, you know, behind this, or you want to allow SSH uh, through, but you only want to do it, let's say that you're a small company, and you're going to do the maintenance um, of Linux servers inside, you know, and your maintenance window is Saturdays or Sundays, you could come in here on this accept, this port, let's just pretend that this was SSH. And you could do the same thing. So you could allow this rule to work on Sunday during your maintenance window. So I think that that kind of wraps it up for the WAN in, the ETH, ETH0 direction in. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Ask questions. We'll work through some of this together if you ask questions, I promise. And we will see you at video number two.